for years I've been getting questions about my photography and I've wanted to put together presets and a course and ebooks for so long, but it's one of those things that I kept putting off. And for the past year, I have been working on my presets and I'm so excited to finally be launching them for you to use to edit your photos with. Today I want to share some of my tips and tricks for taking better photos. These tips apply to taking photos with your digital camera, but I'm going to direct them at taking photos with your smartphone. The cameras on our phones are incredible now and it's so easy to just carry around your camera essentially in your back pocket and be able to take photos whenever inspiration strikes. So today I'm going to share how I use my iPhone to take beautiful professional looking photos and then in the next video I will share how I edit them. So let's go ahead and get started. When I first started my photography journey I was selling ribbon in my Etsy shop and I remember reading some things about using natural light and that was when I started to understand that light is everything. So I got a poster board and I would place my ribbon next to my sliding glass door and I would take photos of it. And I started to see just how much better photos look when they are taken in natural light versus artificial light. So that's my first tip for you and it's really vital when you are taking a photo that you use natural light and not artificial light. And by artificial light, I mean lights on in your house. So if you're going to take photos of something in your house, or maybe you're taking a picture of your son or daughter or something like that, go ahead and turn off all the lights. It might seem counterintuitive. It might seem like you really need more light. Maybe your house is a little bit dark, but I promise you that natural light is going to look so much better. If you're taking photos in your house and the light is really poor, or maybe you're outside or something and the lighting really isn't great, and you feel as if the photos aren't bright enough, that is totally fine. You can always, 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 always brighten a photo up in post. In my opinion, it's always better to have an underexposed photo, something that you can brighten up afterwards when you're editing, rather than have an overexposed photo or a photo taken with artificial light. So my tip number two continues on with lighting. I think that it's very important to know that without good lighting, your photo probably isn't going to turn out very nicely. So here's my rule of thumb. If I have a photo that I'm taking at night or something like that, I'll usually turn it to black and white. And you'll see this done with wedding photos all of the time. You'll see the beautiful photos at the ceremony, and then when you look at the party later on at nighttime, the photos are typically turned to black and white. And that's just because it's really hard to take a beautiful professional looking photo at night. It's really important that you have proper light and adequate lighting. If you are trying to take a photo and the lighting is just really bad or really harsh, it's just really hard to take a good photo. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. It doesn't really work. So I always try and reserve shoot days or anything that I'm shooting for days when the lighting is really good. Good lighting to me is beautiful, diffused, natural light. Natural light from the sun. And when I say diffuse light, I mean light that is not really harsh or overhead. If you're trying to shoot outside in bright sun and the light is right over your head, it's going to cast really harsh shadows and it's going to make all of your features feel really harsh or all of the features of the subject really harsh. So I just don't shoot on days like that when it's really sunny. I will typically reserve shoot days for cloudy days or if I have to shoot on a really sunny day, I will move the subject or move whatever I'm shooting into the shade. Shade can be your friend, but it can also make your photos a little bit off color. Sometimes if you are in the shade and it's really sunny out behind you where the sun is shining, not in the shade, it will feel really, really warm. And then in the foreground where it is shaded, it will feel really cool. And you can always edit that in Lightroom, but it is kind of difficult to get just right. So cloudy days are my favorite. I absolutely love it when it's cloudy because I know that I'm going to have good photos that day. If you're shooting inside, diffuse light just means light that's coming in, maybe from a window, and it's providing this beautiful glow for your subject, but the light isn't directly hitting it. So if the sun is coming in through a window and it's hitting, you know when you can see in the afternoon, or in my house, in the afternoon the sun comes in and it hits the floor and I can see every little piece of dust, that's the light you don't want to shoot in. You want to shoot in the light where all those dust bunnies are hidden because it's going to provide much more attractive light for your subject. So if I'm trying to shoot maybe an outfit or the goats or something like that, I will go outside, I will wait for a cloudy day, and that's when I know that I'm going to get really good photos. Some of my very favorite photos have happened on cloudy days. 
talking about my number three tip, which I think is just as important as number one and number two, is shooting straight on. And when I say shooting straight on, I mean shooting with straight lines. So whenever I am going to take photos of something, I will pick a line in the photograph, whether that's a wall, a ceiling line, a tree, a fence post, something that is straight vertical or straight horizontal that's going to provide me a really good guide for how to shoot the photo straight on. And if you have a smartphone that you're shooting on, you can always turn the grid on and this will help you take immensely better photos. If you have diagonal kind of crooked lines, especially if they're just a touch diagonal or a touch off straight, the photo is not going to look as good as if you were able to get those lines really straight. So if I'm shooting interiors or if I'm shooting outside or something, I'll use the horizon on the grid or I'll use a fence post or I'll use a window grid or something like that to really line up my grid on the photo so that my photo appears straight on. I have an example of how to correct this in my mobile editing how-to video. I'll put a link in the description below if you want to check out how to fix that. Sometimes you take a great photo and you realize it was a little bit crooked. If that happens, you can easily fix this in Lightroom. My number four tip, and I see this all the time, is to allow a bit of bokeh in the background. And the bokeh is the blurriness in the background of the photo. You'll see that this is easily achieved in portrait mode, but sometimes portrait mode, I don't know, I don't really like portrait mode. I don't shoot in portrait mode that much. But if you just step away from the background and let the background be itself, and then you be in the foreground or your subject in the foreground, it's going to produce much prettier photographs. My tip number five is to use your grid to achieve really beautiful composition with the rule of thirds. You'll see that there are nine little squares on your screen when you turn your grid on. I like to use the cross points of these lines as little placeholders for where I'm going to place the subject in my photo, and this will give you really, really pretty composition. Typically, I don't intentionally center things exactly unless I really want it to be intentional. Say I'm taking a portrait of an animal, I will oftentimes put them dead center in the photo, but that's really intentional. It's not on accident. But usually when I'm taking a photo, I will place the subject of the photo on one of the cross points of those lines on my grid. And this is known as using the rule of thirds. You can see I do this all the time, and I think that this really adds dimension to a photo and will make your photo that much more beautiful. All in all, I think that light is one of the most important things. And aside from light, really shooting with those straight lines and allowing the background to breathe a little bit from your subject so that you add a little bit of depth into your photo. And then lastly, using the rule of thirds to compose your photos. I hope that you found those tips really helpful. If you haven't checked out my presets yet, I will put a link in the description below. I think you'll really enjoy them. And if you're interested in learning more about photography, I have an ebook where I teach you how to switch from auto to manual mode. Now, I hope you'll check out my next video where I teach you how to use my presets. If you haven't subscribed yet, I hope you'll subscribe now. And don't forget, you can always visit me at boxwoodavenue.com.